All right, welcome to D&D DIY. Today I'm going to show you how to make a custom wax seal. Now, if you've seen my campaign coins video, uh, I use some of the same techniques to carve campaign coins, and we're going to apply those same techniques today to making a wax seal. So here are the things that we're going to need. You're going to need a, a lino cutter or a, a speedball lino cutter. This one has carving tools in the tip. So if you don't have one of these, um, they're inexpensive, they're a great investment, especially if you can do a lot of carving for stamps, coins, whatever. You're going to need uh, a rubber block. This is Speedball Easy Carve. Uh, as you can see, I had some designs already on there I was working on. We're going to need a stamp pad. This is going to help us check our design. You're going to need a pencil, and you're going to need a pen. Another thing you can use is a uh, prescription bottle. And what you could do is you could store all your stamp heads in there. You know, they fit right in there, the small size ones. And when you're ready to use one, take it out, put a little bit of putty. This just happens to be uh, some rubber eraser. And attach your stamp head. And there you go. Boom, boom, boom. You can do a whole bunch of stamps and then replace it. So instead of permanently attaching one of these stamp heads to a wine bottle cork, you can have a whole bunch stored up in here. And then they're interchangeable. Keep it stored. Boom. And you're going to need some tape. And if you're drawing a design from without uh, from memory, and also we're going to be drawing our design from a design book. I'll show you that in a second. But if you're going to do that, you can use some transfer paper and some copy paper, uh, tracing paper, and I'll show you how to do that momentarily. So this is a Japanese design book from Dover Press. They have a whole bunch of different designs uh, you can find. There's one for Celtic designs. There are ones for um, uh, heraldry, like medieval designs, and um, they're free to use. So, you know, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to look for a design that's circular, like this one here is a nice size for our wax seal. And I'm just going to find one that I think I can use. That one's pretty cool, too. And I'm going to get my tracing paper, uh, and then I'm going to copy it onto tracing paper. I'll let you know when I've done that, and we'll be back. Okay, so this is the one I chose. All right, so I'm going to trace this one. Okay, now that I'm done tracing it, I'm going to transfer this onto the stamp using the transfer paper. Okay, begin by taping your transfer paper down onto your rubber block. Make sure it's the dark side down, that's where the graphite is. Then you're going to take your tracing paper, you're going to put it over the top, and if you want to tape this as well, you can. You can cut a square out and tape that down too. Uh, I'm just going to hold it down. I'm going to use my ballpoint pen this time to really press down to trace the lines. It also helps to see over the graphite of the pencil you traced earlier. So press really good and trace the whole thing. All right, let's take a look. There we go, much better. So now that gives me a nice outline from where to carve, and that's going to be our next step. Okay, so now we're going to carve. I'm going to take my lino cutter, and I'm going to be using the 
U-shaped blade. I don't know if you can see that, it's not focusing. But uh, it looks like a little bit of a U-valley. There's ones that are sharper Vs, and those are great for making um, straighter lines. The U ones I find are good for hogging a little bit more material out. So to get started, I'm gonna do that. And I have a lot of space in between the outer petals here. So I'm just gonna start by pushing this in and going around. Now, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't go too wide because that will go outside the borders and I don't want that. And remember that whatever we take out, that's where the wax is going to go into. Likewise, if you're carving to do uh, the coins and you're pressing this into polymer clay, whatever you take out, that's the void that's going to be filled by the clay. So I'm just going to go around following the contours of my petals and we will see how it looks afterwards. And all you need to do is go nice and slow, rotating the rubber, not your wrist. So if anyone has worked a sewing machine, it's that same concept, or even a bandsaw. You're turning the wood, you're turning the fabric, you're not really turning the saw blade or the needle. Just for these big borders, it's it's for me it's easier than snaking my my wrist around it. And then we reach the end, boom. So as you can see, we got a nice deep cut. It's not bad. So th what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a shallower um, cut, and what I'm going to do is cut from the inside out, out towards the border. Because well, I, I don't want to have pieces flying off where I don't want them breaking. So if I push in here, if I start from the outside and go in, okay, I'll get a cut for sure, but it's not gonna be a very clean break. If I start on the inside and work towards the outside, it'll reach this lip here and it will break off a little bit more cleanly. So I'm gonna start off with this one here. I'm just gonna go, give it a nice push through. And you can see it breaks off a lot cleaner as it reaches that edge. And same for this one. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna push through. And the harder I push, the deeper it goes. Very good. All right, I'm gonna do this one. Let me make sure that you can see it first. That would help. Okay. This line. This line. Okay, now what I think I'll do is I'm going to hollow out that center circle. And for that, I'm just going to push this tip in and I'm just going to turn in a circle. Again, make sure that you guys can see it. Okay, nice, I have my center circle, and I am going to get rid of that part in a little bit, but for now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to, again, I'm going to try to get these little pieces out here in the middle of the, the petal. I'm not gonna try to go this way, because it might create a rip that rips more rubber towards the petal end. So again, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cut towards the cut, and since I have a cut in the middle here, I'm gonna cut towards the middle, towards the edge. So I'm going to start it here, and I'm just going to cut it in, and lift, in, and lift.
left. Clear my tip. In. Lift. In. And lift. In. And lift. So you can see, I mean, that's pretty much done. I could go around and I could clean it a little bit more. Um, and I can actually, I'm going to cl clear this out. But I kind of like that line in there in the middle. So I might leave it. We'll see how it turns out. So the next thing to do is actually to cut this entire piece out. You can use scissors and, you know, cut around it. You can use a, um, a hobby knife and cut it out this way and then you can slowly shape it to that that shape um, I also might just take this make a circle around it so I have a border and cut that out that way I can mount it to the circle when this is done um, if you have something like a circular template those help this is this is actually too large for my circles but any, you can use anything as a circle. Here's a here's something from a, a paint can, uh, tube of paint. You can do that. So I'm going to cut this out, and I will be back with you to test it. So now the question is to see how well it works. We're going to get some ink on our stamp with our stamp pad. Ink it nice and well. And then I'm going to... Press it onto some paper. We're going to lift it and we're going to see how it looks. So now remember, when we use this, it's going to be filled up. So all the white parts are going to be raised. And you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I might do some cleaning here and cut this piece out here. And cut this kind of like shave this shave these corners a little bit, so they're more of a more of a heart shaped. Like this one's a sharp corner here, and this one's a sharp corner here. I might just round those corners a little bit, but other than that, this is good to go. Okay, now to test out our custom wax seal. Now you're going to need to uh, get either a lighter, some matches. In this case. I have a soldering gun. I'm going to try that because uh, my lighter is out of fluid and holding the matches, you got to go very quickly to melt the wax crayon. I'm going to use just a cheap wax crayon that I took the paper off of. And also with the uh, the lighter, I was getting soot and so I was getting some black mixed in with this orange and I want to try to go for a cleaner color. So I'm just going to go with the orange and try the soldering iron to melt this, uh, this wax. And since our thing is very big we're going to um, need quite a bit so I'm going to try to melt a, quite a bit of this a big circle around here and then we're going to press it on now if you are under 18 please have an adult handy don't play with fire don't play with matches don't even play with these soldering irons because they can get dangerously hot so let's see oh yeah look at that that melts perfectly I want to make sure that's folded down So I'm going to get a whole bunch on here, and I'm just going to try to control my drips all over the place. That's beautiful. I'm just going to try to get a whole bunch on here, a huge big pool of hot wax. That really works well. Holy cow. And you know what? That should be big enough for what we need to do with this. So into the holder you go. And then we go with the wax seal. I'm just going to press it in there. I'm going to leave it for a hot second. Hopefully it dries and hopefully it comes back out clean too. All right. I didn't get a chance to put this on the handle yet. Let's peel it back and 
voila, there is our wax seal. How awesome is that? Using some cheap rubber that we carved, design book, a crayon, and a heat source. And you know what? No fancy equipment required. No fancy um, engraving. You don't have to send this to a custom designer to get a, a die. You have your very own wax seal. How easy is that? Next time, make this fancy. Make a note, slip it to your uh, players. They will appreciate the extra mile you did. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time on D&DIY.